hammers, gavels. What's the difference? I don't know. Top 10 ancient laws you won't believe, part two. Number 10, spell cast. I got a bunch of great ones coming for you right out of Babylon, so buckle in folks, you're gonna feel the wrath of King Hammurabi today. This law is to protect against those pesky conjurers, those spellcasters, those pesky wizards. Oh, worst. This law states, <clears throat> If a man has been accused another of laying a spell upon him, but has not proved it, the accused shall go to the sacred river. He shall plunge into the sacred river, and if the sacred river shall conquer him, he that accused him shall take possession of his house. If the sacred river shall show his innocence, and he is saved, the accuser shall be put to his delifing. Oof. Basically, if you start accusing people who can't swim of spellcraft, which, I mean, everyone can't swim back then, that's just how it goes, there's no yieldy swimming lessons, or at least I don't think there was, you're gonna be the hottest real estate mogul in town. You're gonna be owning a lot of houses. All you're missing is a get out of jail free card and the orange properties, because those are always the best monopoly. Everyone loves the orange properties. I don't know why, they just do. Number nine, building code. For our Canadian fans out there, maybe you remember a certain blonde haired dad who helped rebuild not up to code buildings during the 2000s on a hit reality TV show. No, it wasn't me, silly. Mike Holmes. Yeah, Mike Holmes. We all love him. We remember him. If I've learned anything in my time as a Canadian, it's that certain beams have to be load bearing and they have to go in certain places. To learn from the show, at least. Well, another law from ancient Babylon was inspired by Mike Holmes, or uh, at least had him there in spirit. This law states, if a builder builds a house for a man and does not make its construction sound, and the house which he has built collapses and causes the de-life of the owner of the house, the builder shall be put to his own de-lifing. Listen, I would love it if there was never a single building mistake ever again, but man, that's pretty serious. I mean, come on. What would modern landlords be without some 50 year old shoddy apartment to rent out? Give me rent. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! Number eight, Operation. Remember the fun family game Operation? That's right! Folks pulling large and obtuse shaped objects out of a man who's not even asleep for his own major surgery. Water on the knee? Pfft. More like easy one, two, three, dad. I got this. Oh no, the surgery didn't go well. That'll be 30,000 Monopoly dollars. Uh oh! Continuing with the trend of messed up laws, there's one more from King Hammurabi. If a physician operates on a man for a severed wound with a bronze lancet and causes the man's perishing or destroys the man's eye, which I don't know how that would happen, but okay, they shall cut off his hand. Now, that would really spice up family board game night. Be careful with Charlie Horse Dad, wouldn't want to lose that pole polishing hand. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> uh oh! Number seven, ancient insurance. Yes, yes, I hear you. I know you wanted some laws about ancient insurance because insurance law is super interesting and of course I found something related. Not exactly insurance as you know it today. No, no waiting on hold for a claim they probably won't give you. No, this was more about justice. This law states if the robber is not captured, the man who has been robbed shall, in the presence of God, what else, make an itemized statement of his loss and the city and the governor in whose jurisdiction the robbery was committed shall compensate him for whatever was lost. Kind of like a forced insurance policy. Judging from the last couple of points, I don't want to see what happens if they find out you falsify that information before before God. I don't, I don't think that would be a good idea for you. Don't do it. Number six, farmers. Irrigation. It's the invention that made agriculture boom. Now in Mesopotamia, people could grow food, lots of food, and civilization kind of just built itself around it. However, this irrigation was all fueled by mother nature, so floods and droughts kind of put a damper on that. It's kind of like when I fart. I never know when it's gonna happen, it just does. Kind of like the force. Maybe sometimes I force it out. Anyway, this law states that if a man neglects to maintain his dike and does not strengthen it and a break is made in his dike, then the water is carried away from the farmland. The man in whose dike the break has been made shall replace the grain which has been damaged. If he is not able to replace the grain, they shall sell him and his goods, and the farmers whose grain the water has carried away shall divide the proceeds from the sale. Now listen, I, I like that because I grew up in, in rural Canada, so you know farmers helping each other. I like that, neighborly, except the part uh, where the guy that makes a mistake, we sell him and take his stuff. That part I don't like. Helping each other's great. Dividing the proceeds is awesome, but maybe we should be nice to Bill. Sometimes Bill makes mistakes. That's all I'm saying. Number five, whales. Back in the day, a whale, dolphin, or any animal like that could fetch you a high price. So every once in a while, a creature like that washes up on the beach. You can understand why everyone would want such a stinky, rotting corpse. Whale oil was a hot commodity of the past. 
Edward II, being the snobby royal that he was, said, Nah, what you made it, bruv? The wish, that's more oil. You know, get that, that's more. So in 1324, he made a law that said any whale that washes up on shore belongs to him. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that works because there's no phones and it would take a minute to get the message to them, but if the whales wash up on the beach, it ain't going anywhere, so uh, have fun fighting over it. Good luck, good luck, guys. Number four, stolen milk. Texas, the land of cowboys, barbecue, and Jesus, America at its finest. Shout out to Texas. How you folks doing? I'd love to come out and see you sometime. Maybe when I'm famous. Anyway, there's a law from Texas from way back in the day that I think was very strange. Up until 1974, it was illegal to milk your neighbor's cow. Now, for those that don't live in the country, I'd be the first to tell you how important agricultural communities are, and dairy farmers are some of the finest. Although I find it strange because after a long day of milking your cows, no farmer ever said, well, <laughs> better, over, uh, better go over to Dale's house and milk his cows. He ain't gonna do it. <laughs> no one ever said that. Farming's hard. The law was most likely there to protect those that would steal the white gold, not so much as awkwardly come over and milk old Betsy for you. It's kind of a weird thought. Number three, marriage in the afterlife. Oh boy, this one is so weird. Since the 19th century in France, marrying a corpse has been legal. Now, I know what we're all thinking, and that ain't the reason why it happened. Don't get, get your mind out of the gutter, stop, stop it. It was more about legal birthright, like if your husband perished in battle before little Louis was born. However, I just can't stomach the issue of your partner being a corpse. Baby, I love you, and I don't care if your eyes are hanging out by a skull with a tendon. It doesn't matter to me that a stray dog took your leg away. Your intestines hanging out of your stomach is beautiful to me. That's just a new fashion trend. Oh, and the smell? Oh, I love the graveyard smell, honey. You're beautiful. Just weird. Imagine like showing up to a party like, hi, this is my wife, this is Christine. Number two, no Christmas. I don't know about you guys, but I love Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends at the cottage this summer. I got the Hawaiian shirt on, we're, we're cruising baby, I love it. But Christmas, man, that's my favorite. It's the shopping stress. I love to see the joy in people's faces when you get them gifts. I love gifts. Dinner, the desserts, I love it all. And of course, I was always a good boy on Christmas, I promise, mm -hmm. never bad once. Well, back in the 1600s, King Charles I was unhappy with another group that did not share his religious values. It's kind of a trend in history. So for this, he canceled Christmas. He outlawed Christmas. How awful. Imagine, no more awkward dinners with your uncle saying something insensitive at the dinner table. No more stuffing your face with good food and no more Santa Claus. I didn't think he was a thing back then in the 1600s, but uh, we'll go with it. So back in 1660, this law was revoked under new management. And thank goodness, because I love Christmas. Thank you for that, thank you. Number one, trial by combat. My brother in Christ, this one is really strange. I, sometimes marriages don't work out, things happen, life is not easy, and managing your way through a relationship can be tough. So, anyone that's going through a divorce right now, the best advice I could give you is that, look, you once loved each other at some point, so do your best, have some grace, and split peacefully. It's just better for everyone that way, including yourselves. That being said, a medieval German tradition was to decide on divorces by combat, what else of course? The husband would sit in a hole with his arm tied and uh, have a bag of rocks and the wife would have a club. Basically, it was time to go Katniss Everdeen on each other. And I can't really describe what would happen next because you two probably wouldn't like it. But that's how it goes. Okay guys, uh, that's enough for me today. Time to wrap it up. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too uh, wanna see Santa Claus this year, then check out my social somewhere down below. I know Santa Claus personally. Come, come check me out sometime. I'll make you laugh, I guarantee it. I love you guys so much, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. I love you, bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> you will turn to the dark side of the force, young Skywalker. Oh, I'm afraid the Death Star will be quite operational by the time your friends arrive. No!